A little while ago I did a review on the Night Fox Day Night Spotter. Now I've had that for about 18 months and it's been absolutely brilliant. Today I've got in my hands the Elite NV200C which I've got on loan from On Target Range in Northampton. Now this again is a Day Night Spotter but I have to say it's half the weight probably. I haven't measured it exactly but in operation and use it's probably about half the weight of the Night Fox. Much smaller, it's more ergonomically designed so it fits in your hands a lot better. Nice soft rubber edge for rub against your eyes, and the beauty of it is it comes with a nice soft strap, runs on four AA batteries, and the key feature which I like about this is you can take photographs on it and you can also record footage, video footage on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get some footage during the day of the valleys and the hills around here, and then I'm going to take it out on a shoot tonight on a dairy farm. Now I can't promise to get any actual footage of animals or rats on the dairy farm because I have been hitting that farm quite hard over the recent months and the rat numbers have dropped down. But I will get some nighttime footage and we'll have a look at the footage during the day and also the footage at night. What I want to do now however is just run through some key features on it and just show you how brilliant a piece of kit this is. So the, up, the buttons on the top, very soft rubber tactile buttons, very easy to use. As I said, it's a day and night spotter, so for during the day operation, you've got this little rubber eyepiece in, which just simply pulls out like that for night operation. And all that is, if you have a look carefully there, you can see a little infrared filter there. So what that's doing is blocking the infrared light during the day, because when the sun's out, obviously it's pumping out a lot of infrared and it'll overwhelm the CCD. It won't damage it, but it will give you a slight pinkish tinge over the top of your, of your footage, pinky purple tinge. There's a focus wheel on the side here, so that just gently brings everything into focus nicely. This side here is your infrared illuminator. Now it's got three levels, low, medium and high, or one, two, three, whatever you want to call it. And it's, it's very powerful. I mean, I could probably see out to probably 100 yards, no problem at all with this. The top you've got zoom, so you've got a five times base, uh, base optical mag and a two times digital zoom. That's your infrared button on the top here. So that here, click that and that will increase one, two, three, off, one, two, three, off with the infrared. Now, the operation is so simple. One click power on, simple click. Now, good or bad, um, I'm not a fan of the single click on because you could easily knock it when you put it in your bag, but it does come with a hard case, so it means that you can put it away and you can keep it safe and stop the knocking, you know, accidentally knocking the button. In the side here, you've got a little, a little slot which opens up, so just if I can get my nails, pop that open there, and you can see if I pop this open, you've got room in there for an AV out, USB, and the SD card. The only thing I don't like about this is if you have a look there carefully, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little bit of whiting here. That's because the plastic's starting to get soft where it's been opened and closed a few times. It would be nice if it had a bit more of a tail on there so you could click it open and slide it out, but that's you know that's not going to cause any problem with the actual operation of the device runs on four AA batteries which are nicely inserted right at the front of the unit which balances the weight very very nicely indeed. It's got a standard tripod stand so you can bolt it onto a tripod and leave it switched on and leave it running there. Obviously a neck strap which you can put around your neck when you're out and about and you're carrying it around. Now this is so simple to use. Simply click it on and then the main operation, the main button you're going to use is you zoom in your IR. Once you're in the menu mode, so what we'll do is we'll go into menu now and I'll run through what's in the menu. Now. I'll talk you through as I've got it. So we've got format right at the top, which allows you to format your SD card, clear it all down very, very quickly. Auto power off. That's a really nice feature, which isn't on the Night Fox. So when you've got it around your neck and you're out shooting, you sometimes you'll be scanning around and you'll complain, you'll see something, you'll move in, you'll take the shot, and then you go and clear it up, and all of a sudden you forget you've left this on. Now, if you've got this on, especially on say a level 3 IR, that's going to burn through the batteries pretty quickly. So what's nice is the auto power off on this will just switch the device off for you. We've got TV mode. Now, I've not used the TV mode, so I can't comment on that, but I think, ah, yes, it is. So it's just NTSC and PAL, so you just decide because the US NTSC and the UK are PAL. So we'll just drop back out of that menu, we'll set that to PAL. There's also frequency in there. Now, frequency sets it between 50 hertz and 60 hertz. Now, I believe the US operate 50 hertz and the UK are 60 hertz. So it's nice to be able to switch between the two frequencies. Now, backlight, now you can see where I'm holding this here in broad daylight, really nice bright day. I can read that menu absolutely perfectly. I've got this on level four. It goes, level four is the highest. It'll go down to one. Now at night, it might be nice to have it on one because what you can do is turn that right down and then you can be looking around in the dark, lift this up, have a scan around and put it down without getting any glare and have the readjust for the nighttime. It's really nice. The Night Fox, again, doesn't have that. It's just a fixed focus level, a fixed light level. 
so it, it is a little bit irritating and it has multilingual support now you can also set the date and time and have that stamped on there now I don't set that on the footage myself I've just left that off so let's come back out the menu now I'm having a look at this now I've got a 16 gig SD card in and then it's telling me in the bottom left I can record 2 hours and 38 minutes of footage if I click the board button once that will take me onto the camera mode and it's telling me I can snap 122,614 photographs now that is pretty impressive for a 16 gig memory card and the third press will take me into the review mode so I can skip through and see what I've recorded and see what I've got see what I've previously taken photographs of or video of and then a the fourth press takes me into the menu really really nice bit of kit and like I said the beauty of this is you can just literally pick it up and you can scan around from here so what's that probably about an eight inch gap between the eyes so I can just hold it up and I can still see my peripheral vision what's going on around me but I can use that as a kind of obviously a human picture in picture if you like so as I'm looking around or you can bring it right up to your eyes and then you can see the screen there now the aspect ratio looks 4 by 3 rather than 16 by 9 but that's not going to be a problem because you can either resize that on your video editing suite if you want to put the videos out but the, the clarity is absolutely crisp it's absolutely beautiful screen now what I'm going to do is shortly after this I am going to put up some stats on the screen and you can have a look at all the spec the tech spec of the device rather than me go through it in the field but what I am going to do is get some footage of the fields and the trees and the crops the valleys all of that during the day and then as I said tonight when I get out on the dairy farm I'll get some nighttime footage and I'll throw all of that up soon after we've done the tech specs and you can have a look the unit is retailing for I believe 190 pounds on target range Northampton really really nice bit of kit and what I like especially is like I said the ability to be able to record can't do that on a lot of my day night spotters um, because they are designed for spotters but the beauty of this is you can spot with it if you see something that you want to record single click on the snap button on the top which is this one here single click of that starts the recording so I'm looking across the fields now I can just scan tap and now it shows the little record button and it counts up and tells me how long I'm recording for I can quite easily pan around and see I can still see what's going on around me, I can see the camera and all the rest of it or I can bring it right up there very stable image date and the time in the top left hit the snap button again, stops recording really is as simple as that and the unit itself, and I'm going to hold this because I've got it on load, it's not mine but the unit itself is ridiculously light so light, it's beautiful to use pick it up with two fingers and you can scan with it this is for me, if I had to pick between the Knife Fox and this, I'd pick this. It's a, it's a beautiful bit of kit. And what's nice as well is the screen is very sharp glass, very clear, and this nice rubber seal stops light leaking out at night and stops daylight leaking in during the day. So, let's get some footage. Let's have a look around with it. Um, I'll do some standard footage on the base optical zoom, and I'll do some additional footage with two times magnification. Just bear in mind when you're using the digital zoom, it's the same with the likes of uh, pods and the likes of the ATN scopes. You have a, so let's just have a look at the ATN scope. You have a, the one that I use, a 3 to 14 by 50. So that's three times base optical zoom, this being the five times base optical zoom. And the 14 is a 14 digital zoom, and this is two, two times digital zoom. So when you zoom out, oh, sorry, when you zoom in on an object, you're zooming in on the digital image, you're not moving the glass. And by doing that, you can get a little bit of pixelation. But we'll see what it runs like. From what I've seen, in my initial test, it does that very well. Once you start going out on some of the scopes, the 14, it gets very, very pixelated. But this is a nice two times digital zoom. So if you spot something, quick tap, 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 zoom in, and you're done. So, enough talking, let's get some footage. Let's have a look around. Um, there's not a whole lot to see, to be honest. A lot of crops. And if you're a crop, if you've got a crop fetish, or you uh, just like greenery and yellowy, colours then you're in for a treat and then tonight we'll get out some footage I'll put it all together and then we'll have a look at the end when you're first looking through the scope on this what you'll find is very crisp clear view the colours are not quite as sharp as you'd expect on a say a video camera but you have to bear in mind this is not a video camera this is a spotter it's designed for quick focus and quick spotting of quarry across the distance, hence the five times magnification. I look at this pile on the distance, so we're on five times base optical mag. 
knock it up to one and a half times digital zoom. Two times digital zoom. And then we're going to bring it back to five times base mag. This is standard definition, there's no high def chips on it, but you can see even the standard definition you're getting good, decent images. Bear in mind, like I said, this is not meant for everyday filming. If you want that, you go for a camera. This is meant to be a quick way of spotting what's happening in the distance. It's got a decent refresh rate on it, so as you're panning around, it catches up fairly easily. You can see the colours contrast nicely against the backdrop. It's really good for up close work as well. And then you can very quickly zoom out and focus on distant objects. Remember those stills I was talking about? Here's an example of one. See it's a nice decent quality picture there. And you can also blow it out to 16 by 9 without any real loss of detail or depth. Run through a few different stills here just to show you how the different colours contrast across the woodland and across the fields. And you can see, pretty impressive for an entry level spotter. Even if you're just out and about in the woodland in red shoes, this is a lovely bit of kit. Like I said, very lightweight, put in a rucksack, and then you can go for a trek through the woodland. As soon as you spot something of interest, it's just a case of hunkering down and then you've got the absolute perfect tool for scanning around. You can be looking around and then should you need to record anything of interest, simply click the snap button and then you're good to go. So here I'm recording the video in picture in picture. As I said, you can click the mode button and you can also switch across to snapshot mode and take photographs if you wish. Very easy, very quick operation, all single touch buttons, very tactile, you can feel and hear them click, they're really good. So over at the dairy farm I thought I'd take it out for a spin and we could see what it's like at night. Now I'm shooting most of this on level 3 IR and you can see the quality. I honestly think the quality is better in night mode than day mode. You can see the water droplets on the fence and the mist from the broken pipe. Very very impressed with it actually at night time. Now the grass looks bright white because that's very green lush grass and if you look at anything that's green and fresh and lush and infrared it does shine back bright white. And obviously the cows are white they're not green. Now these are bags of silage and the reason I videoed these is because they're black and I wanted to show what you would see in a black and white image using infrared against the black background. And you can see here, you can see everything absolutely perfect. We'll continue to scan around. And we've got a muck heap against the back of a barn wall. Let's quickly move into one of the buildings. This is a green store that I did a lot of shooting in over the winter. And you can see it's full of building material at the moment, but it's completely pitch black in here. And I wanted to show the quality of the camera and the infrared illuminator by scanning around. I'm in here looking for ferals and just look at the detail that camera's picking up. I'm going to move into another barn now and you can see I'm just scanning around looking for ferals and rats and if we look up at the ceiling I shot some footage of this moth just to show you the detail and the fluttering of its wings so the infrared is illuminating that beautifully and the camera's picking it up really well. As I said, the whole thing comes in a nice hard carry case. Very easy just to slip it in underneath that elastic strap, close the lid, zip it up. The case protects it and also has space inside for any cables, spare batteries or SD cards. You're getting all of this for £190 I believe and it's on sale now, available at On Target Range in Northampton.